Welcome to a new episode of Science in Context. This week, the REACT study completed its 19th and final round of random COVID-19 testing across the English population. I'm Sabina and joining me today are Professor Crystal Donnelly and Professor Mark Shadohiam. Crystal, since May 2020, more than two and a half million swaps were tested, providing unique insights. A huge thank you to you and the team for this immense effort and the late hours and drive that you had to share your findings. What was it like to work for the REACT study? It's been a very intense experience and a long one, as well as studying the epidemic and the transmission patterns for almost two years. Of course, we've lived in a situation where both members of the team and our families have become infected. So it's affected all parts of our lives. But we've considered it a real honor both to take part as well as to work on the study so that we can do as much as we can to contribute to knowledge and understanding of the disease. Mark, what are the key findings of this last report? So in round 19 of the REACT study, we collected tests on almost 110,000 people in England. And we found that over 6.4%, which is one in 16 people, were infected in March 2022. This is more than double what we uh, saw in February and over 40% higher than what was observed during the first Omicron peak in January. We also found that uh, infections have risen in all regions of the country and at all ages. However, the latest data showed that infections may be decreasing in school-aged children but rising in people aged 55 years and over. People who have been in contact with the confirmed COVID-19 case were found to have more than one in five chances of testing positive. Crystal, given that the restrictions have now ended in England, what do these record high numbers of infections mean? The numbers of infections in those 75 and older have almost tripled since February of this year. Even with vaccines to protect us, when infections are really high, it can lead to more people going to the hospital and potentially more deaths. This round also looked at vaccination of school-aged children. Mark, can you tell us more? We found that almost one in 10 primary school-aged children tested positive. We found that vaccination appears to be slowing down the spread of the virus in the secondary school-aged children who have a lower prevalence than the primary school-aged children. And the primary school-aged children have just been offered vaccination in England. Thank you both so much for all the work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you.